Welcome, welcome everyone to Shasmus TV episode 326. Today is uh, January 21st, 2017. We advance to the future. Today we are playing such a cool variant. I'm really excited to try it. Something once again we've never done before. It's called Five Pawns to Win. I just called it Five Pawns above me there, but Five Pawns to Win is the full name. The goal is to win five pawns. If you capture five pawns, you win the game. Seems like that'd be really easy to do because you've got a couple of knights, bishops, maybe throw away your queen and just sacrifice like crazy. So maybe white will win really easily. And if that is true, we might have to switch to playing six pawns to win. But I have a feeling that black will get, you know, a little trade in there or block. And so if white just sacrifices his whole army, he'll end up losing. So let's find out. I'm really excited to find out if this is going to be a quick white win or not and how black can defend. So I'm going to throw a challenge into the chat right now. I don't trust, I've got a challenge coming in from extremely bad at chess, but I don't trust that he's going to play five pawns to win. We're going to play casual for this first game because, well, we don't know if it's going to be easy for white to just win. Let's find out. So I'm throwing this link in the chat. First to click it gets to play. Let's add the logo back on here. Oh, it is already there. It's just hiding up in the corner. Cool. Hi, logo. That's great. It's over there. I can't point. See, my left and right sides are flipped. Did you know this is actually my right hand? Never mind. This seems kind of cool. Dumb. Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to turn on my URL. There we go. Chesswiz.tv. Great. So capture five pawns to win. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to play my knights out because if a knight can take a pawn, it's doing well. And then maybe, maybe this move. Five pawns to win. Capture five pawns to win. Okay. It's always a good idea to ask if it's okay. Um, because every now and then someone shows up and just doesn't think it's okay. And that really wastes everybody's time and brain cells. Um, he's pinning me. See if he wants to trade. So the trade is really going to affect my sacrificial plans because I don't have five pieces to sacrifice anymore without bringing a rook into the game. And I was going to use that knight to sacrifice for a pawn. So I think I don't want to sacrifice a bunch of stuff just yet until I can get a rook going here. So maybe if I advance this pawn, I'll get the rook into the game. Or maybe I should advance this pawn and just play rook over this way. I'm not sure. A pawn trade will sure make things dangerous. We'll find out. Thank you, Orz Hova, for telling me I deserve way more subscribers. Usually I have to pay people to come into the chat and say that so that everybody's like, oh, yeah, you're right. And then they click follow. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're right. I do. But I didn't even have to pay you, so I, I really appreciate that. It saved me a lot of money. I'm going to move the bishop here. It attacks this pawn. The knight can't reach a pawn right now. Oh, it's a trade of pawns. Okay, so everything is cutting it close. That's one pawn. It's one pawn cutting something. It's cutting edge. Cutting, you're dead. I am going to cut you because that's the second pawn now. Three more. We've traded pawns. That is so close to the end of the game now. It's going to be very easy to take his last pawns. I've already captured two, and so he's pretty much dead. I think this is going to be the third one. This is going to be the fourth one, and my queen can take this one for the fifth one. Easy peasy, and then the, as they say, lemon squeezy. Not going to be close after this. I did have to trade there. I wish my knight could reach a pawn in this area. That would make things better. So the theme... The theme of this show is probably going to be today sacrificing because... So I could take a third pawn here and a fourth pawn here very easily. But how can my knight capture that fifth pawn? Hmm. Maybe I should just play d4. No, that wouldn't quite do it. How could I capture that fifth pawn? How could I do that? Oh. My knight, I don't see it. I'm sure you guys see it, but I don't quite see it. So I'm going to just keep playing chess. I don't quite see a way. Okay, so now we can trade. Oh, that's really interesting. Now I can take this pawn, so he resigns. Okay, yeah, he's he's only taken one of my pawns, so that if you're behind in quantity of pawns, you can't get ahead in one move. All you can do is tie it up, and then the opponent can get ahead. So you really need to stay at least an equal, I believe, in terms of quantity of pawns. Good game, extremely bad of chess. I think you are well named, unfortunately. But I did like your first move. It was a very good move. The first one. The rest were... Yeah, but 
the, the first one was great, so I just want to focus on that first move. Good job on that first move. We're going to play against Sarsor now. He's rated 1600, which is very strong. You might think if you watch a lot of streamers that 1600 isn't very good because most streamers are above 1600, but actually it takes a lot of effort to become 1600, and it's way over the average rating uh, to be 1600 strength. So here I'm playing the black pieces, and as a black, I'm moving second, and I'm going to be the defender, because if he can take five pawns, he gets the first capture, and I'm going to be in big trouble. So I'm going to start with this check, allowing me to trade uh, bishops in this case, and with the trade now, I'm under much less pressure. He doesn't have five pieces to quickly sacrifice, because he has fewer pieces, so I think I'll survive the game a bit longer here. Unfortunately, a pawn trade will uh, re recreate my danger. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Normally in this opening, black plays d5 or c5, uh, just to kind of take a stake in the center, stake a take. But the problem is that's going to allow a pawn trade, and he will capture first, making my game very deadly. All right, d6, knight d7 is the way this is usually played. Why differ from the usual? Having less space here does seem inferior. My bishop is not attacking a pawn. The knight is not attacking a pawn, blah, 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 blah. So I don't really have a lot of easy targets, but it's the same for him. He's not attacking any pawns on the whole chessboard. So this game's going to be a little bit longer. What is wrong with my hand? Oh, oh, it's cut off. Oh, I should like add some blood coming off of my wrist here. That would be such a great effect, but it's actually just like, oh, my arm. <laughs> and yeah, it's not as exciting as I was hoping it would be. It's still... It's still okay, but it's just not as exciting. I'm kind of worried about this position, though, because I'm going to have to offer a pawn trade somewhere here with one of these moves, right? Offer a pawn trade into the center, and that is very dangerous in this variant, I believe, because he captures first, and that'll give him the momentum to start making big threats. Let's play h6, avoiding the bishop coming down. Ooh. Ooh, okay, so with e4, he's blocking his own bishop. Maybe, okay, so I can attack a pawn. His bishop cannot, so that gives me the upper hand. Also, my knight is attacking a pawn. Okay, it's the same pawn, but hey, at least it's something. I think I'll play e5. Allowing a pawn trade, that'll be the first pawn. He could take the second one here, but he's a long ways from five, so I feel pretty good about this. I'm going to have three pawns under attack. The only problem is it's going to be the same pawn every time. But hey, that's three. Uh, that, that adds up pretty nicely. Question in the chat. Milan Kranjajun asks, is this guy normal? No. No. Normalcy is failure in my life. I set a goal to be weird this year, and I'm already succeeding. So that'll be the second pawn. This will be the third. And then I'm dead. Huh. Maybe knight. Maybe knight here. That'll be good, right? So then I can take a... Oh, I'll threaten here, right? Okay, so he'll push, right? Or something something kind of defensive. And then I got a second pawn, a third pawn, and a fourth pawn. That's fantastico. Then I just need the fifth pawn, which I might be able to get with c6. Okay, so I'm, do I'm going for it. c6, b5, even though it's a stupid plan, it's enough to capture a fifth pawn. That c4 pawn is kind of vulnerable. Maybe I should keep my queen on the board, though, until I, you know, finish him off. Yeah, so let's sacrifice here. One pawn. Oh, he could take my queen. Oh, he didn't. Okay, I think you should have taken my queen. I think maybe you should have taken my queen. When there's a free queen, you should take it. That's a good rule of thumb. It's just a good rule. I'm going to play this right now. Nope, I'm not. Oh, this is so scary. I'm giving up everything in order to gain nothing. Just watch this genius play. Oh no, it doesn't work because he could capture this way. Watch me win. Watch me do it. Okay, he has four pawns left. That means I've captured four. One more pawn to victory. This is going to work. I'm going for the C pawn. Like I said, this is a very vulnerable pawn here. And bam, bam, rook b8, my last rook. He has to play rook e8 check uh, to, to distract my rook, but it's only temporary. 
and he resigns. He cannot save this pawn. He cannot save it. Of course, he can guard it, but I will sacrifice the last bit of my army to capture that. That'll be the fifth pawn. Woo! That was an interesting sequence of sacrifices. So in that game, the opening was kind of slow, and it really got interesting in the middle game, which is perfect, because you don't want it so the white just wins, bam, in the opening. So that was good. Hopefully there isn't some amazing opening for white that does kill the game because that would really break the variant if white just had a forcing attack other than that if white does not have a forcing attack then then the variant's quite good i think the fewer number of pawns to capture is better because the game is more affected and spicy by the variant i mean you play eight pawns to win you'd basically be playing chess until like almost the end game and then you'd like maybe there's a sacrifice so five pawns that's really changing the game four pawns to win i think that might be unplayable okay i got the white pieces that's good. Good luck, Steuben fish. I'm assuming that Steuben is another language. What does Steuben mean? What does Steuben mean? <laughs> Because in English, it just sounds like stupid. And I'm sure you don't mean to name yourself stupid fish. Well, maybe you do. I mean, I am extremely bad at chess. It's kind of self-deprecating. So stupid fish could be a name. Fish is actually slaying in chess. A fish is, is another name for like a, a wood pusher. It's a, a bad chess player. I don't think that's what he's trying to be, though. So I'm now attacking a pawn. This is good, y'all. And I want to attack more pawns. So I need my knight. I would love to enact a pawn trade. So as the white player, I've got more momentum already. Great question, Program Fox. He says, in the unlikely event that someone promotes four pawns, is winning not possible? <laughs> in the unlikely event that the Earth becomes two Earths, it seems about as likely that you would promote four pawns. <laughs> stupid question, stupid fish. That's a stupid question. Hmm, he says it's German for room. Very good. Someone promotes four pawns. Yeah, because then you can't capture them, right? So I have to define the meaning of the four pawn promotion. Let's pin that knight, I guess. Having trouble, you know, enacting an immediate victory. So I sacrifice one here, and then I can't quite, I can't take anything with this or with this, so I don't think I want to give up a piece just yet. Yeah, so the rule is, oh no, I'll play here. So the rule is, if you promote four of your pawns, you're invincible, <laughs> because you don't have a fifth pawn for the opponent to capture. However, with four queens on the board, you would seem kind of invincible anyway. So that's my answer to you. But it does seem about as likely as you accidentally, when you're, when you're as your cells are splitting, your cells get mixed up. And so instead of splitting, they... um. Oh, this is super bad. Uh, he'll take my free bishop and see if he does that. Instead of splitting, your cells actually, like, there becomes two of you. <laughs> That's about as likely as promoting four times in this game. And then you're like, which one is me? I need a philosophical answer to this hypothetical question. Because I feel like one person, but I am two. No, stop taking my pawns. Let's trade queens. Stupid fish is just owning me this game. It's German for room. What about fish? Fish. Fish. Okay. He's trying to get my pawns. I have five, so he's taking three. Two more and he wins. Two more pawns and he wins. He is way ahead. I need to protect these two. Ooh. I need to surprise him with some wizardry here. Like this. Did you see that wizardry? He wants to take this to win, but he can't because he's pinned. And now, uh-oh. Man, I need better wizardry. I think I'm just going to lose this. My fifth pawn. No, don't take it. Ah, I could sacrifice my rook, but then another evil enemy pawn will come into range. I think there is no escape. Oh, I must resign. Good game, stupid fish. I shouldn't have 
moved by Bishop out so you could take this pawn for free and then decimate my queen side. It was horrible. That's what I shouldn't have done. Okay, I'm ready to move into the future. There's one quality of human beings that's so, so useful. You should develop this quality. It's called moving on from bad decisions. But step one is actually acknowledging bad decisions. So many people are like, something bad happened. It was Trump because Trump just became president. And so that's a very good reason to blame um, all of your problems on him. But it's actually better. Like, for example, I could blame Trump that there's water in my eye right now. But the fact is, I put that water in my eye. And if you just live a life that takes responsibility for everything and then says, that's okay, the step two is important, that's okay. Otherwise, you're just going to live a life of horrible self-degradation. Then you can actually be more functional as a human being. I'm going to play against Sarsor again here. What is loud and smells like an apple? Sounds like an apple. Hmm... A MacBook. <laughs> I have a MacBook, and whenever I turn it on, it's like... <laughs> it does that, too, with its eyes, and they bug out. <laughs> so I can tell you that it is loud and sounds like an Apple. Because Apple is the manufacturer of MacBooks. Get it? Apple. It's a company, and it manu... Never mind. Okay, so I think I'll just play this move. I do have more space, so I feel like I'm winning. But it's not the easy victory that I expected. Hmm. Hmm. What language is Sarsor? So it's a two-step process. I like that what I just said so much I'm gonna repeat it. Should I castle? Should I play here and offer a trade of pawns? Yeah, I'm the white player. I've got the momentum. I've got the extra space. I'm going to offer a trade, which will move me closer to victory with the five pawns attack here. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have taken him with pawn. Should have taken him with something amazing like a queen. I guess I'll trade here. It's kind of dumb. Kind of dumb. Oh, chess whiz is kind of dumb. This variant is kind of smart, though. If you think about how badly this could have gone with white just instantly winning, instantly and winning, this is way better um, because white does not instantly win. We actually fight for a little bit. So I actually think this variant is so good, I'd like to submit it to the repository of variants. That's the official repository of variants. I'd like to submit that right now because it's actually playable. It's fantastic. Just fantastic. Mm -hmm. So what am I thinking about now? I'm thinking about cheese. I love cheese. A long time ago, I knew nothing of cheese. When I was growing up, actually, I didn't eat cheese at all when I was a young boy. And so when I became an adult, I knew absolutely nothing of cheese. I was at this event one day, and I was like, oh, this is a wonderful event. It was some party being put on by a, a music company. And so they were trying out all these instruments and wandering a boot. That's what I like to say when I want to be sophisticated. I was wandering a boot, and this person came up with this boot full of cheese, and they were like, would you like a cheese, sir? Okay, is that really a move that you want to make? I don't think so. And I said, yes, I would. Oh, this is delicious. And so I picked up a cheese. It was like this orangish cheese. And I put it in my mouth. I like, this is very good cheese. What kind is it? <laughs> and, and the lady looked at me as if I was joking, which people do that all the time, and she said, it's cheddar. Turns out everybody knows about cheddar except for Cheswiz because he's cheese deaf. But uh, after that moment, I learned cheddar. We'll put it that way. I actually think I'll just win this game with this move. So it looks like checkmate, which is an alternate victory to winning five pawns. Oh, it doesn't checkmate him. See, this is the problem with sacrificing too much for too little. Although I might get into some trouble here. I think I'll take this pawn. Yeah, this is just very good. How many pawns do I have now? I've only taken three. Okay, I need to keep taking pawns. This is picking up an easy pawn here. I can take this one, take this one. Now I've picked up four. Oh, one more and I win. Man, is it, so do not. This is this is what we learned from this game. Do not sacrifice your entire army for pawns if you don't get enough of them, particularly if you're short by two. Because you could see he's only captured three pawns. And with a goal of five, as you could see, that's a significant shortfall of pawns. I'm getting a challenge here from the Romans. So I'll take that challenge. It looks like it's raided. Make sure he wants to play five pawns to win here. 
I'll ask him, make sure it's okay. Because sometimes I get challenges from people who are pretty much blind and deaf and they don't play the variant. So, okay, he says, yes, okay, so let's try it. Uh, so if you're short by two pawns, that is a big deal. You've played three checks chess where you need three checks to win. One check is not very much like three checks. Watch out. Two checks, though, it's very, very close. So he's got to watch out for every possible check. It's very deadly. Oh, yeah, trade pawns. I love it. Now I'm just going to win. Let's uh, let's check here and then check here and just start sacrificing stuff. Yep, yep, this is good. Okay, I got my second pawn. I need my knight to take a pawn. So let's do this way. That's going to be my third pawn. Oh, I've been foiled. Could it be that I'm not going to have an, an easy win here? This is going to be my third pawn instead. My fourth pawn might have to come from a slightly different channel. What if he plays bishop here? Oh, that would be obnoxious. More trades after I sacrificed a piece. I'm going to offer a pawn trade. That's going to really hurt him because pawns are kind of in short supply right now. And I have an extra one. So pawn trades will bring us both to victory. And by that, I mean it will bring me to victory. Think about a, a game of sports like soccer, football, basketball, where, you know, the teams are not quite matched up. In this case, the chess the chess armies are not quite matched up. And it, maybe I've got five... He's got five pawns and I've got six. I don't know. And so you imagine five players against six out in the field. It's going to be kind of a close game, even with that extra player. If the five players are really good at their sport and the six players are not as good, the five can definitely win. But if you make this trade pawn for pawn, suddenly there's fewer of everything. So four against five, three against four. And if you imagine one against two, suddenly, even if those two aren't very good, they can outclown the one simply by hitting him with a large rock. So overall, trading really helps you if you're already ahead which is why I played c4. Now I need to find a large rock. So let's see, this move here, and I'll be attacking this one. Seems kind of risky. I guess I'll castle. <laughs> there is some danger of losing my queen, which I don't really like to lose my queen. Oh, a message is coming in from Extremely Bad at Chess. It says, oh, those are all my messages. You could pause the video if you want to read them, I suppose. We also have a challenge from Meowk. That's cool. That's cool. This very interesting variant. Mm. So after taking responsibility for everything, you should, you should say that's okay and move on. Both very important skills. I've met people who simply can't take responsibility for anything, and they are obnoxious to be around because they always blame people, which isn't fun. Um, but on the other end of the spectrum, there's people who take responsibility for everything, and they're very pleasant to be around because when something bad happens, they're like, oh, oh, that was my fault. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, you ran out of time. Oh, that was my fault. I didn't remind you. I'm so sorry, Roman. I should have told you you were low on time. I should have added time. I am so sorry that was my fault. Let's move on. That's step two, moving on. A very important so that you don't um, wallow in your own self-pity and become dysfunctional. Moving on, saying, I will do better next time, and I will, and then just like living your life. Imagine something bad that seems out of your control, like you're driving your car and someone drives up behind you and then they drive into you. You might say, oh, if only that person had done that, it's so terrible, it's, it's Trump's fault, right? Which makes sense because Trump invented cars. But if you just take responsibility for that and say, you know... If I had just gotten up five minutes earlier, I would have been up there on the road where this stupid driver isn't, and I could have avoided this accident. It seems kind of extreme, because how would you know that you should have gotten up five minutes early? But just having a lifetime of taking responsibility and moving on, saying, it's okay I'm in this car accident, it's okay that my arm just fell off, but that's okay, I have this Kleenex, I can staunch the flow of blood, go to the hospital, and I'll live my life, or at least what's left of it. That will allow you to stay a functional human being. So I recommend this philosophy. I haven't tried it, but it's probably pretty good. So you should just get back to me on how it works. Yeah, you can get back to me. I, I don't really want to try it, actually. So you just try it out. Uh, yeah, get back to me, that'd be great. I'm going to push this. You know, we haven't traded any pawns. We've traded other things. Very interesting. I should have traded pawns. I could play d4. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I gotta keep defenders here. I think I can just have to play chess here. I think I'm just gonna have to play chess. It's too dangerous. 
Oh, let's put the rules in the chat just for people who are wandering in, like Flickr Alex 1992. Hello, Flickr Alex. I'm so glad you're joining us. Wow, my gladness is overflowing. If you notice, it's what it's doing right now. I'm gonna play this move. Thanks for hosting me, by the way. I don't know if that means anything, but it says there, it says Flickr Alex 1992 is hosting you. I don't know what that means. It's like you have me over for dinner. That'd be great. I'm starving, but I don't see any food. So whatever. Thanks. And then it says, Sarsor, what about five atomic pawns? Five atomic pawns. That's a very interesting variant. Uh, you must mean atomic chess with five pawns chess at the same time. I think I can get away with this. Atomic chess is already so volatile. I mean, you blow up the king, it's over, but I might not even change atomic chess much. We're going to have to try that. We're going to have to try that a week from today. Nope, we're not going to do it a week from today. You guys know what's going to happen a week from today. It's going to be awesome. We have a special guest coming on the show. If you've heard of him, you should have heard of him. I think you should have heard of him because he's awesome. Just, I mean, like his name is awesome. It even starts with A because it's so awesome. The One of the best crazy house players on this website, Lee Chess Master Atrophied, who makes YouTube videos about awesome crazy house things. In fact, in fact, I had an episode where I played knight f6 on the first move. It was e4 knight f6. Maybe you should go back and look at that video if you haven't seen it yet. And that was based on his video. He said, look, guys, you can lose a piece in the first... Uh-oh. Uh, I can't afford to lose these pawns. I shouldn't have allowed that. So he's a hit by one pawn. I better play this awful move. Rooks don't like to defend, but stupid Rook, you have to defend right now. Um, I made that opening based on a video he made about that opening when I when I played that variant. And that, I sorry that opening. I'm so confused because I lost my A pawn. Blah, 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 blah. Keep me my A pawn back. I don't think I'll ever get another A pawn this game, and it's just disconcerting me. You notice I'm no longer at a concert. But as I was saying, we're having him next week which is two episodes for now we're gonna play crazy house and he's gonna show me the secrets of crazy house and then i will never lose in crazy house which is crazy i'm looking forward to that i'm gonna play here because this is cool that's pretty cool i actually feel like trades would be great for me because i'm down a pawn oh ooh. what if i play here and he takes me here then i play here and he takes me here Ooh. Ooh, this is gonna be really tight. Really tight. It's like an old pair of jeans. Oh, he has this move. Stupid. Just was stupid. That's stupid. Look at this awesome move, Queen B6. If only I were him, life would be so good right now. Because I would play this move, check, and then I would just take that knight. Yep. If I were him, of course, he's just gonna run out of time. No, he didn't run out of time. It's awful. I'll take with the queen. Queen b6 check. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it to it. Do it to it. He didn't do it. I have five pawns left. Okay, so knight a5 was a horrible blunder, but that puts it on par, I'd say, with the other moves chess whiz comes up with. Now, the next pawn he takes, he wins, so f6 is going to obliterate me, and I plan to survive that. I'm a pretty good survivor. As you can see, I've survived it. And now I'm just going to own him up. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. More blunders. This is not good, but it is kind of bad. Um... My next move, for my next move, I will play here. Uh. <laughs> I am so dead. For my next move, I will run out of time. Oh, I'm so, oh, I could have beat you if only I had, oh. Oh, well, oh, I'm moving on. Good game, that's good. Let's play with another friend. I think this is gonna be the last game of the show, so enjoy it, enjoy it. I didn't, um, I didn't make a list of cool things to improve your life today, so I guess I'll just do that really fast. I have this, I have this advice thing. Where I, where I give you advice. So, 
So I'll just write down what I told you, which is one, take responsibility, responsibility, and two, move on. <laughs> it's only a two-step. You always have to do a three-step process because a two-step process, people are like, that is such a stupid process. It's too easy, so I'm not going to do it. And a four-step process, people are going to say, that is so hard to remember. I can't remember four things. So three is really the sweet spot, but unfortunately today is a two-step process, which is take responsibility for everything. I mean, you wake up and your toothbrush was used by your dog. That is your fault. I don't have a dog. You are the one with the dog, and that is your fault. So if you just take responsibility for everything, problem solved. And then step two, move on, because you know what? You can just use that toothbrush anyway. I'm not going to arrest you for illegal dog toothbrush using. It's actually legal in my country. So if you just move on from that, you are fine. I have traded a rook and pawn for a knight and bishop. Was that a good idea? Maybe it was a bad idea considering the five pawns rule. Let's tell him. Capture five pawns to win. I wonder if he doesn't know. I wonder if he's just playing chess. That would be hilarious to me. Oh, he probably knows considering that move. Is he going to trade his queen for that pawn? I hope he does. I actually hope he does. Yep, he says. This is the last game of the episode. Flicker Alex asks, is it possible to win a chess match without losing pawns and pieces? I don't think so. What do you think? I've done it before. E4, bishop, c4, queen, h5, queen takes f7, checkmate. It's called the scholar's mate. It's very pleasant, as long as you're not the scholar. I'm going for it. Trade your queen for this pawn, man. Your rooks will totally <gasps> win. Do it. Do it, do it. Queen for pawn. It's a great trade. He does it. Okay, so when he captures one more pawn, he is the instant winner. So he should be arranging how he can capture this pawn, right? But So he's moved his king over so that the bishop the, pawn, the bishop is no longer pinning the pawn. So now he can buy f5 and I'll be trapped and I'll lose in a terrible fiery ball of doom. But actually, I'm playing this move right now, which... I love witches, which if he plays here, I'll take it with the knight. So he's got to prepare that with g6, but then I'm going to shock and awe him by trading my bishop for a pawn. I am going to win this game with my face. I'm so going to win this game. He better not take anything of mine. That's what I say. Mm. Oh. Okay, I take that. Oh no, oh no, what's gonna happen? I'll tell you what's gonna happen. I'm gonna win, I told you I was gonna win. Why didn't you believe me? So if I take this and he plays g6, my pawn has to go here, but then here, and my pawn is dying and it's corrupt. But I don't have to push that pawn into its own doom. I can play my queen right here right now, and look at this. This is what I call dangerous. don't like it very much <laughs> i'm still alive though this move works i want to challenge his rook i would love to trade rooks however i don't mind that very much though let's play there I think that was a mistake. I think he should have doubled up rooks because then I could not play rook f1. He would just take it for free. And I would kind of struggle to get my rook in the game while his rooks would be kind of scary. So I think he should have played rook f8 right there. Rook af8. But now with this rook kind of scared and this rook not in the game, I play rook f1 next and I'm kind of dominating every channel, which is good. I like dominating. I'm going to kiss my hands. Very good. Okay, so I will just take this for free. Is he going to engineer a win with only what remains on the board? Let's do the knight and then the bishop. I don't think he can. Now he's down to five pawns, so if I capture two more, I will win this. And I think I could take one this way and then sacrifice my queen. I've done that already. And then the one this way, I win. I will win, anonymous. Cool name. I'm scared, though. Maybe he won't resign. Maybe he'll take this pawn. So let's do it this way. Now I've taken five pawns. I are a winner. 
Winrar. I'm a Winrar. Rawr. Good game. Anonymous. It doesn't feel as satisfying to defeat Anonymous, you know? It just doesn't. Anonymous, take that! Okay, so I fixed my Rune Darkening face punch. I just have to announce that my face punch is really good now. It's supposed to darken the room, and in the past it didn't, but watch this. Watch this, Anonymous. Bam! See how I'm getting dark? It was really difficult to do this because, see, look, okay, I'm bright, okay, watch out, Anonymous, bam! Room darkening face punch right there. Um, because I don't have any room anymore. I actually deleted my room, which is how I got this um, transparency to work. So yeah, you just have to select the room and then delete. And it says, you want to move that to recycle bin? Then you have to press escape. You have to like, shift delete. I am so annoyed when I get the recycle bin prop and I'm like, okay, I'm really, really deleting this. So now that my room is gone, very difficult. I have to tweak with the settings and yeah, it's a, it's a very dangerous life I lead now. So that's that. The episode is over. Don't forget to follow on Twitch. Don't forget to subscribe to YouTube. And most importantly, don't forget to think of Chess Whiz every moment that you are awake and sometimes when you're asleep. Dream of Chess Whiz, I don't mind. Next episode's going to be Tuesday at, at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. GMT, Tuesday, January 24th. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to, you know, do you remember King of the Hill Chess? King of the Hill Chess was an invention of somebody I know. I'm just making that up. But what happened was you play E4, King E2, and you're like, I'm going to win in the opening, but you can't. So we're going to modify King of the Hill Chess slightly. Instead of saying that you um, buy, instead of saying that you need to get your king into the center, now you just need to get your king anywhere on the fourth rank. So that's going to be a very, very quick game. I think you can just start running your king out and win instantly, but maybe not. So we're going to find that out next episode, King of the Fourth Rank Chess, here on Chess with TV. This has been Chess with TV. Thanks for watching.